This next session is one that I've saved to the end on purpose um, because I do believe that one of the biggest components of, of staying motivated, one of the biggest components of having hope, one of the biggest components of pushing through struggle is having your mindset right. Having your mindset right enables you to work out the, the, the data, enable you to work out the marketing and the operations and the company culture. But if your mind isn't right, all of those things are 10 times harder, maybe even impossible. So um, this three hours has flown by. We're moving into our last session now and um, welcoming back to the program for a segment called Rally Point. And Rally Point is about like, hey, this is where we all get together and we talk about how we're gonna do the next step and how we can get our mindsets right so that we can actually win. So welcoming back to the program, David Long, Executive Manager of the Hansel Auto Group, and JD, or Jeff Dantzler, call him JD, because that's what his friends call him, um, the General Manager at Manly Honda, both in the Bay Area of California, two West Coasters. Uh, we made the program later for you, so you guys, you know, you're waking up at 10 a.m. every day. Um, that's not true, but gentlemen, welcome to the program. Good to be back, Paul. Good to see you, and it has been awesome so far today. Thanks for a great day again. Oh, my pleasure. Fantastic show, Paul. It has been uh, it, it's been awesome, and uh, pleasure to be back with you, man. Thanks for doing this. My, it's it's truly my pleasure. So I don't want to waste any time. I want to get right into it. Uh, people that have been part of the show before know who you are and know kind of what to expect. But I want to really talk about this concept of fear. Um, I really want to lean in because everyone listening uh, is or has been over the last months in an elevated state of fear. And I was just talking to my therapist coach last night and I was really curious because he obviously talks and counsels with a lot of people. And I said, what are you seeing psychologically? What's happening in people's minds? Uh, what's coming to your, to your desk throughout this time period? And he said something I didn't expect, uh, but was actually kind of alarming. He said, the level of fear that people are experiencing right now um, are causing them to shut off the logical thinking in their brain. And basically, he, he said this, he said, I'm not trying to get political. He said, but what happens when you have something that's creating so much fear in you and your brain shuts off? He said, what happens is you become basically a zombie sheep. He said, and it really similar to what happened in Germany way back in the day where there was major crisis and major uh, major um, kind of propaganda of crisis. I'm not saying anything is or isn't, but he was saying when that happened, people revert to fear and then they give up control, not just control of what they do in their daily life and their freedoms, but they give up control of their logic. And just today, I was reading an article in Forbes from one of our guests on the previous, our very first State of the Union, Dr. Nicole Lipkin, also a psychologist, and she said that our brains cannot tell the difference between a virus who we may not really be vulnerable to, be, depending on our age and our health and all that, we can't tell the difference between that small threat and a tiger attack. And again, when, we, when we're being attacked by a tiger, we react, we just react, we don't think, we don't logically go through things. So I think that really woke me up to the framework of today's conversation because the opposite of fear, I think, is hope. And so we're gonna get into this conversation, talk about, um, talk about, um, what your perspective is on the fear that you're seeing amongst your people and what we should be doing in order to help them get through it and ourselves get through it. JD, why don't we start with you? Yeah, I mean, you, you said it perfectly, Paul. I, I, I mean, you know, the mind is looking for that saber toothed tiger. And, you know, it's a 10,000 year old brain that sees a saber-toothed tiger, but in, instead of a saber-toothed tiger, it might be a CIT list that's 12 days old or whatever we perceive, you know, our boss, which is a lot of people <clears> listening <throat> to this podcast, mm -hmm. their tone, their inflection, what they say, what we might get with them. And that, that, that's what the mind is there to do is to protect us. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is awareness that, you know, the mind is an organ. You know, it, it's, you know, the mind is there to figure things out. And, you know, when fear shuts that off, it's to go to the heart, man. The heart is not going to lead you astray. I mean, that's going to guide us. That's, that's, that's where, you know, the opposite of that fear is hope, but is also faith, right? Fear and faith mm -hmm. are both imagination directed. And it's <laughs> up to us really as leaders and, and, you know, anybody listening to this podcast is identify that is sometimes that 
thing we imagine is just directed the wrong way. What do you mean by that? Well, it, you know, whatever you're focusing on, which is most likely when it's fear, mm -hmm. something that isn't happening now, but could be happening. Of course. Yep. Is now you're focusing on a possible future event. Mm -hmm. And then what meaning am I giving that? And then by giving it whatever meaning I'm giving it is going to create the emotion in me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of the managers and the leaders and people like yourself, you know, if we can't direct that properly and lead ourselves properly, it's going to transfer to our people. And really the way out of that is by concentrating on our people, mm -hmm. because, you know, the beautiful thing about us as human beings is we will always do more for others than we will ever do for ourselves. And suffering and fear and all of those things is the story of me mm -hmm. and about me. And when it's about we and we understand our role, we tend to get out of that fear because then that fear goes to purpose. Mm -hmm. And when we have purpose, we tend to, you know, break through walls that 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 are there because there's some we're serving something greater than ourselves. And that's that's where courage comes in. That's where confidence comes in. Um, David, I want to bounce to you. Um, what, what's your thoughts on that? Um, JD just so eloquently put it. Um, what do you have to add to the conversation? You know, I so I get the good fortune of being able to talk to a lot of my people. I've shifted all my offices out into the showroom so I can be front and center. And what I've noticed the most, Paul and JD, is that it is unreal irrational fear that our pe that my people seem to be falling into just a hundred forms of irrational fear of things that may never come to pass but I think as a leader really what my responsibility is is to find a way <clears throat> to give people certainty give people an environment where they feel safe guide people in that <clears throat> what I call manufactured misery right, where they can grab something and turn it into a bigger issue than it really is and put that to bed through communication immediately. Don't let it get bigger than it is. What are some of the things? So you said people uh, making things bigger than they are. They're, they're, there's these irrational fears that are taking over and taking control of people's minds and their logic. What are some of the, the irrational fears that you've seen kind of bubble to the top? So what I've seen is there's a lot of anxiousness, a lot of anxiety, a lot of people that feel unsettled. So things that would normally be uh, water under the bridge or water off a duck's back have a tendency to be a little more relevant right now. In other words, we're making mountains out of molehills mm -hmm. because we're full of this cortisol. Mm -hmm. And I think when our, when our brains are full of cortisol, we don't make rational decisions. And to your coach's point last night, I think people are in overtime finding reasons to feel work um, anxiety. Mm -hmm. And it's not hard. You look anywhere, Paul, it's easy to find. So I think the more we can do what the chief heart officer talked about, give people um, a safe place and uh, give people a, uh, the feeling of safety just through presence, mm -hmm. the better off we'll all be. Leaving people better than we found them, I think, is how she said it. It is. It is. My mom. So that's huge. I think it's important. Um, we're going to pause right there just for a word from uh, the company who sponsored this one. I uh, want I'm excited to say it's the Rikus Group. And have you ever met someone that you immediately knew the work ethic, values, motivations were aligned? Well, that's the experience I had when I met Mike Anderson, the owner of the Rikus Group. And then I started realizing it wasn't just me, but it was a lot of people in the industry like Dale Pollack and Dave, people that I respect had the same perspective of him. And I really believe because Mike has cultivated the Rikus Group into an organization that cares holistically about dealers. And they not only have they set up more dealers with negotiation-free pricing, but they also have helped dealers navigate crisis and train their sales team in a way that actually is focused on the people of the business, not just the processes of the business. So if you're looking for that kind of stabilizing force in your dealership during these uncertain times, I encourage you to reach out to Mike Anderson at the Rikus Group. I don't think you'll ever regret it. I'm very proud that the Rikus Group has chosen to support the Automotive State of the Union as we support the industry. And I am also personally proud to call Mike Anderson a friend. So you can reach out to them and learn more at therikusgroup.com.
that was my that was a that was a good one because I know Mike Anderson personally, and it's really nice to. I think good people should know each other. Um, so it's good. I don't know if you gentlemen know Mike uh, Mike Anderson, but you should too. So, um, okay. So getting back into this conversation, um, thinking about leaving people better than when you found them. I believe that a leader is supposed to be a source of courage and inspiration in times like this. JD, you work with a lot of people all day. You, you're in the dealership world, like so many people that are watching. What are the things you're saying to people? Because I know if you spend 10 minutes around you, you know that I'm, I already know I'm gonna leave better, feeling better than I was when I first came in. And I was feeling pretty good already, but I already know that. What are the types of things that you find yourself encouraging people to do it, how you are encouraging them to think because I think some of the other leaders watching this might be able to take a couple pointers and tips from that. Well, I, I mean, I think that's a great point, Paul. You know, my mentor, you know, Brian Manley, this, uh, the, the dealership owner here is um, he taught me something when I first became a GSM a long time ago, and it's always stayed with me. It's exactly what you're saying is he said, you know, JD, we're going to have, you know, maybe 10 meetings or even five meetings. But with that person, given our roles, we have five, they go home, they've had one. Sometimes we can forget because we're so in front of people that it's that one meeting and it is that one meeting that matters. And, you know, there, there's nothing, you know, no blanket version to really, give anybody i don't think so but what i what, what i do believe is to listen and understand where that fear is coming from if it is fear and to usually reframe that into a challenge or a mission because we all like challenge i mean you mentioned struggle i mean struggle it is none of us talk about the the great times in life and it was easy I mean, oh, yeah, that was really easy, and we're going to tell a story about it. You know, we talked about when we grinded, when we were, you know, when we had a car and a gym membership, and then we got in the car business. And then from the car business, you know, we, we got into it, and we, we learned how to sell some cars, and it was straight commission, and that was fearful. I mean, it takes guts in general just to be in this business. So, I mean, when you start getting them back to their roots, which is – hey, you know what? You've been through tough times before because to, to create certainty, you have to have a role model. And there's plenty of role models out there. I mean, you know, Viktor Frankl could be one of them. I mean, there's, you know, Nick Vasuyichik. I mean, he could be, I mean, they're, they're countless out there. I mean, hero after hero. But let's say you can't find one of those. Well, a role model is a tough time that they've been through. So tell me about a tough time that you've been through before. And did you get through it? Because that's going to create that certainty and that confidence in that individual because we've all been there. And sometimes we got to go back to our victories to remember them, to realize that we're going to have this victory too. I mean, every one of us are going to get through this stronger and reminding them that we do create our own destiny. And if we're suffering at all and we're stressed out at all, is usually that comes from something of, that we cannot control and we feel like we cannot change. So let's work on something that we can change. Let's expand our abilities. Let's expand our knowledge. Let's expand our skills. Because it's kind of like if you stepped into a ring and you had a boxing match and you hadn't trained and you're not really good at it yet, you're probably stressed. Mm -hmm. But if you've had a good camp and you've trained a lot and you know you know what to do in that ring. You can't wait to get in that ring. And that's all we are. We're just in another fight. We're mm -hmm. on the uphill right now. Mm -hmm. Just like, uh, you know, the gentleman said is this is uphill and downhill. And right now, man, you know, the race is one on the uphills. Yep. And that's okay. Sweet. Those uphills are what we like. Yep. I mean, those are what we talk about when it's all over. Those and bring meaning, right? The uphills are the ones that bring meaning to the race. Story. Yeah. And we're writing a story. What story, you, what, what story do you want to write? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you want to write the story of someone who pushed through and had courage? And, and do you want to be look back on that chapter in your life and say, man, this is how I did it? Or do you want to be stressed out and, you know, fearful, which we are, but when we can redirect that to a purpose yep. and a challenge, it's the same thing. David, 
you, you talk about this difference between the golden rule and the platinum rule. Um, can you talk about that and how you're deploying that right now? Yeah, so I was raised to, to the golden rule, treat everybody the way you want to be treated. And then I had this sort of epiphany a few years back that I just don't think that's relevant today because everybody that I've come in contact with huh. all want to be treated the way I want to be treated. And now in this COVID world that we live <laughs> in, some people want to be in a hazmat suit <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, and don't come within 20 feet of me and some people want to hug me. So That's this funny. platinum rule, I know, right? <laughs> so uh, the platinum rule though, uh, applies more than just the COVID. It's like every single person I come in contact with, I notice some of them are more fear-based. Some of them have more anxiety and some of them are just happy go lucky. So I have to make sure that when I'm leading or coaching or friending that I give the person what they need, which is what I call, the platinum rule, not the golden rule, because you may not, Paul and JD, you guys might not need or want what it is that I need and want. So that's been a really, uh, that's been actually a game changer for me. We only unfortunately have a couple minutes left. I would like to sit and air and let you encourage people all day long because I think it's that's what we need. Um, David, we're going to start with you. If you could encourage everyone listening right now to do one thing um, today. What, what are you encouraging them to do? Make sure you do this before you go to sleep tonight. Um, well, I, I'd be stealing our chief heart officer's quote, but... That's okay. Um, well, I, give, give me another texture then. You, can, you no, can't I, say that I, one. Give if, us another one. That if we slow down and truly pay attention to people's unexpressed wishes, really truly what they need, even when it's behind one of these... <laughs> It's really hard to read somebody's facial expression, but you can read their body language. And I believe when you see somebody's energy that needs a course correction, mm -hmm. when we take the time to do that, mm -hmm. don't underestimate the power that that can do for people, especially from our seat, because there's a lot of leaders on this call. I think in a lot of ways that would be the precursor to be able to do what Claude Silver said, leave somebody better than you found them. Um, in order to do that, you have to do what you just said first, which is be very aware and listen to what you observe, the, the state that they're in, so then you can meet them where they're at. Uh, JD, we may have taken all the good ones, but I know you have another one in there. If you could have everybody do execute one thing before they went to sleep tonight, what would it be? Well, I think David had some great points there. And, and when you're connecting with people like that, something that, that I always want to instill in my managers, and it, and it has served me very well, is you cannot influence anybody when you're judging them. Make oh. sure, first off, that you're connecting with the person behind the action. Maybe you don't agree with it. There's probably a lot of tough guys and tough gals on this call that maybe we don't understand fear. But when we understand it and we don't judge it, then... First off, connect with the person and, and that soul behind the person. Second, you know, connect with that purpose and realize this is one of these challenges that we can pass on to our loved ones. This is something that, you know, whether it's kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, whatever that is, this is something that when we use it properly and exercise that faith that we do exercise every day. I mean, faith, we use it so much, we forget about it. Driving down a double yellow line is faith. I mean, that <laughs> takes faith to go past another car at 50 miles per hour. We have faith within us. And if we realize that how we can connect with that other person, seek first to understand rather than be understood, connect them with their greater purpose because we will always do more for others than we'll ever do for ourselves. And they are the same way. Humans will always support each other, connect them with that greater purpose, connect them with the greater mission, allow them to write that story and do exactly what uh, both you guys are saying, man. Just be a force for good, man. Live with purpose. In, in a nutshell, before you go to bed, you wake up, you live with purpose, let the universe use you for good. And life tends support to, to support things that support life. And it all works out at that point. I know you're, you're living proof of it, Paul. On that note, J.D., David, 
Um, thank you so much for making this happen and taking the time to actually share some of your energy and some of your insights and some of your encouragement with a lot of people, myself included, that, that it really is our oxygen these days when there's so much to be worried about and so much uncertainty uh, to remember that it's going to be okay and have some, uh, some good brothers on that are going to help me remember and help everybody remember. I couldn't be thankful enough. I can't wait till the next time we talk. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you, Paul. Good to see you, JD. Take care, Paul. Great seeing you, Dave. Thanks, man.